Hi everybody, my name is Jeremy Caldwell. Um, I'm a colorist working in, obviously, in comic books. Uh, I've been doing work for IDW, Dark Horse, I got something coming up from Top Cow, a bunch of other stuff. Anyhow, uh, I figured I would record my warm-up color thing today. I usually, I'll scour the internet and try and find an image that I think looks interesting. And sometimes I'll use that as a warm-up, uh, just slapping some color around on it, working out some different types of techniques that aren't um, that, uh, that I can do outside the pressure of a uh, performance on a actual paid project or page. Um, so this is a page uh, or an image. Um, it was obviously it was off of marvel.com. I just Google searched. Um, I was looking up a uh, uh, lean nil. I don't know how to pronounce his name, but Lee nil Francis Hugh. And uh, this Im image came up, and it was very striking. Hulk is one of my favorites. And it's got Wolverine down in the corner there, so that's always going to be good, too. So since this image was from the web, it was very, very small, or it is currently very, very small. So what I'm going to do is to make it really even workable um, for coloring purposes, I'm going up to image, image size, um, see, it's only 550 pixels wide. So I'm actually just going to make this is going to be a little less than print size, but 300 DPI resolution, leaving it at still basically a 8 by 11 or 8 by 12 almost image. So do that, and it zooms it in. It does not increase um, any of the clarity of the image. Actually, it, it makes it a little bit worse, but it will allow my brushes to have more of the effects that I want. Um, I just have to zoom out. So I'm also going to duplicate this layer so that I can then I'm going to fill in the background with white. Duplicate it. I'm actually going to clean it up just a little bit with curves. Um, that is my preferred method of cleaning, darkening um, images. That works there. I probably don't want a whole lot of contrast in the lines, but I want some. So go there. I'm going to drop that, merge that down with the line layer. And I'm going to set that to, actually I'm going to leave it to normal. I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to put a layer on top and set that to multiply. And for the purposes of this, I'm just going to drop in, actually I need to take out the red of marvel.com I think, otherwise that may screw things up later on. So do saturation, drop that all the way down, merge that adjustment layer. Um, okay, so now I, what was I doing? Oh yes, I wanted to put a multiply layer, and because the overall image is going to be green, I'm just going to go ahead and stick with that idea. I'm going to put a rather in high intensity but dark green on the multiply layer. Um, I use the HSB. Um, HSV is what I always think of them as, but uh, hue, saturation, and value, they use B for black. Um, but that's how I learned to paint, and that is how I usually um, continue working. So I have my brush. I use a typical, just a hard round brush for most of my stuff. Um, and I'm going to start blocking in a few things just on this multiply layer to um, set off some of the, the parts of the image that I want. I think, let's see, so he's mostly going to be green. I want to go with a kind of a cool, um, cool warm alternating. He's got two different sides that are obviously lit very, very dramatically. Um, so I think that, oops, sorry. so that I think that they can, um, let's, I'm going to experiment with tossing in more of a, the yellow on this side, which was actually probably going to end up being the cooler side of the image. Just blocking it in there, not doing any rendering, so to speak. Just going there, and then I'm going to put some red over on this side, which is going to knock the saturation down because it's going over green, which is fine. Um, it'll just make me do a few more adjustments as I get going. And like I said, this is experimental. 
Um, that's the point of doing these warm-ups is just not to get too precious with the final product and just see what comes out um, as I go. So yeah, go with this and just see what happens. So right now, to me, it looks really, <laughs> really strong red, um, but I think that's okay, especially if I balance it. Um, I might go in and warm this one up too, so I have two somewhat warm lightings, or I might cool it off. Actually, let me see what a blue, blue is going to obviously bring it back to the cool. So let's go with that and just see what that and also knock it down. I don't want that side to be nearly as intense. But you can tell by my by my fussing, I really don't know how I want this side to appear. I am I'm starting to like the red on that side though, so that will probably stay it's stay as as it is mostly. Yeah, that works. Kind of a a, a not a yellow yellow, but uh kind of a uh creamish yellow and Wolverine here I'm sure he's probably wearing his yellow and blues so I'm gonna go ahead and toss that um, I'll assume that's part yellow and he's probably got the yellow on this side with blue through here I like I just blocking in colors I'm not concerned really with all that much of the detail and Give him a warmer skin tone here. I'll go back in, obviously, and, and make all kinds of painty adjustments on that. Um, so Hulk teeth, I'm going with kind of a gray green, although on multiply over this, it is looking seriously <laughs> bright green. Same with the um, eyes here, and then a really intense green for the pupils. Um, Wolverine, I'm going to put a kind of a neutrally warm eye. Let's just color over all that. And I believe he has brown. I think that's what Hugh Jackman has. <laughs> so we'll see what goes on there. Okay, so we have the rough, um, the greens, base, red, light, yellow light, and actually I want something in the background. I think I might cool off the background with kind of a, I'm gonna go with kind of a purple to offset some of this green. I find purple a very interesting color. Um, actually the book I'm working on right now for Top Cow has, uh, I'm using purple in ways I never have before and it's really fun. Um, so yeah, that'll hold them together. And drop a background on Wolverine here. I'm going with warm. I just picked that. I didn't explain why. Um, I think it'll offset well against his blue. And then the greens uh, in, in the actual Hulk rendering. Um, so I think that, and I don't want him to be in the same space, the same color space. So I think that having differences like this will make it more interesting, visually interesting And pop him out away from the Hulk figure. Um, I think it was that one. I'm also working without using any. A lot of times I'll define my swatch palettes um, for a piece. This time I am going straight in. I'm not even flatting the piece. I'm not making swatches. I am just going in head first and seeing what comes out. Mm, that works for this basic part. Okay. So I've got reds and yellows. And I'm just adding in areas that I think would be extreme highlight um, or intensity. And now I want to adds because the shadows are penciled in but not very strong penciled in so I want to take this green I'm going to cool it off but add some intensity to it 
and block in some of that shadow area a little bit stronger. Um, this is just the hair shadow. I'll actually go in and probably repaint the whole part of the hair. It's not very dark at all, honestly. Okay, that's better. Of course, it almost makes it a black, but that's okay. I usually avoid, I was, as a painter, I was taught to avoid adding black to any color, and actually as a colorist, that's a pretty good rule of thumb as well. But in this case, since I'm just kind of experimenting and wanting to see what happens, um, I'm doing it. Inside the mouth, it should be very dark. It'll pop it, make it pop out better. And the shadow underneath here, I probably usually I would uh, focus my rendering so I don't have um, different areas that are all sorts of different style of rendering. Um, not style, uh, different quality of rendering. So I want that to be a little more vague down there. And then as I come into the more important areas, such as faces, I can add a lot more of the the attention to detail which will make those areas be much more dramatic and important in the the viewer perception so you can use uh, uh, all sorts of different ways of creating focus um, the most common one is contrast which I get yelled at all the time I just did on a well not yelled at I get critiqued all the time on contrast because I don't use it um, nearly as effectively as I, I know I could. I tend to focus on color relationships and uh, levels of detail so that it it, it doesn't really it doesn't really uh, uh, fit in my scheme a lot of times to have um, different value, plans some people actually plan i mean i know a lot of people most people most really of the good colorists really think about value and that is an area i am working on so like right here i'm i'm focused on these bright colors versus these dark colors i'm trying but have patience because it is not natural to me for some reason i don't know why but it really is a struggle for me to get my value relationships to function properly Just adding a few little areas of volume highlight here. Okay, I'll end his hair. Again, people always have, for darker, they use this kind of this blue and white, and which I don't know why I'm doing, because I am generally, I'm a vocal opponent of that idea, but for some reason I'm doing it on this piece. Probably end up making it more brown as I go. So I'm putting in just some volume highlights to show the eyes. Because those are gonna be key key pieces. Again, adding some detail here. I think that the teeth have an opportunity to really become important piece, parts of the piece, although now they definitely stick out way too much in the scheme. Um, when I when I pull back, I can see that and being like, eh, that's not going to work. So I cover over them some more, gray them out, because I think Hulk would not have nice pearly whites. Yeah, that drops them back better. Okay, so that is the very basic, basic part of the rendering. Toss in some highlight, some red highlight. It's going to be interesting up there. So what I want to do now is, first of all, I'm going to keep fussing because that is apparently what I'm going to do. Brief. All right, so I'm blending this out, even though it's going to get completely painted over. For some reason, I cannot stomach the idea that this is not having some sort of rendered blend to it. One of my hang-ups, apparently. And drop this all darker down here. Because it's going to be less important, I want the focus up here. And 
pull in focus straight down the center with some darker shadow. Okay, so that's the, the basic layer one of color. So I'm going to take another layer, and this one I'm going to leave at the normal level, the uh, normal setting. Um, a lot of times I will put another multiply or an overlay or something, but this time I actually want to paint over what he drew, what the pencil lines are. And I'm just selecting, I guess I should clarify that, I have my, my uh, setup to show to have uh, keyboard shortcuts programmed into a Razer Nostromo, which is a, a gaming pad, but I use it in non gaming mode. <laughs> gaming. I don't use it like a gamer would. I I have it all set up with with uh, a variety of Photoshop shortcuts in there, and it just makes my life so much easier to be able to just pop back and forth between my alt key. A lot of people use the keyboard. Um, I am just, the way I have my Cintiq set up, it actually covers my keyboard. So um, that doesn't help me very much, having a keyboard. I could have, you know, I used to have it set differently, but I bought this uh, stand for um, an, an, an arm, basically, for my Cintiq. And that has made it to where it pulls down in front of my um, keyboard, which works fine, but you know, it could be better. And I'm just pulling in shadow area here, creating contrast over the eye, focusing on the wrinkles that he drew. Um, so the head, I'm still working on some, uh, uh, of my anatomy learning. So I'm going to assume that the head kind of, as I understand it, curves, kind of pulls in over the, the brows here. He's got, uh, some of the veins showing up, which is beyond me at this point. So I'll trust that he knows exactly what he's doing. Although, hell, I'll trust anything he draws because guy's just a genius in my opinion. Yeah, and as I've mentioned in previous videos that I do, um, talking and drawing at the same time are not <laughs> always a very easy combo for me. Um, so I apologize if some of my talking sounds like I'm completely messed up or drunk or something. I don't know. But sometimes I start to ramble. Sometimes I just completely forget what I was saying and and you just have to kind of bear with it or turn off the video sorry um, putting in some hair here a lot of times I will use I have a custom hairbrush that I created um, well actually I don't think I created it was, it was based on a hairbrush that I got from somebody else that has a whole bunch of different hair um, but I made it just where it's kind of tapers and a screen and all sorts of fun stuff. But because I'm just playing on this piece and not really worried too much about final render look, I am not using that brush at this moment. Eventually I may go back into this and, and pull out that brush and give it a, more of a finish. But for now, this is it. Okay, so I'm going to blend out some of this. That looks like he just got shot in the head for some reason. Need to blend it a little more, a little smoother. There we go. That looks a little more like a shadow instead of a, a depression or something. Pull in some of the detail that he drew. the wrinkled forehead area here. I'm actually going to probably make it more wrinkled than was penciled, but that's one of the great things about working in digital is you can really play with a lot of the different 
um, textures and, and details that a traditional comic book penciler probably would not have the time or interest in drawing. It is a very labor and time um, intensive job <laughs> to work in comics. Um, you're always having to decide when is good enough. Um, you, you, you rarely run out of, of interest in a piece before you run out of time on that piece. You just, it's just part of the, the way it works is we only have, we have to put out a product and that product has to be done in a certain time frame because that's what our editor tells us. And editors know best. Something like that. I trust my editors because, well, I assume they know what they're doing. And so far they always have, so I'll go with that. Um, yeah, I'm turning this in more into more of a painting than a, than a color warm-up. So it may... This may end up getting stretched into multiple sessions um, just because I do have quite a bit of other work to do at the moment, plus my, um, uh, yeah, I go do that art lesson with the fifth graders. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and actually pause this recording for probably till tomorrow, work on it some more then. Um, sometimes that's actually even the best thing to do to let it sit in my head and see, you know, what I come up with later, because often I get going in a one direction and be like, eh, that's not the direction I probably should have gone. So anyhow, um, as I continue to work, obviously, Sometimes I get excited on a piece and I just don't want to stop, so, but I will. So anyhow, my name is Jeremy Caldwell. This is a piece by Lenel Francis Yu, and I will, this is part one, hopefully I will continue this later. <laughs>